In this video we're going to introduce enumerated types. These have a strong resemblance to class types in Java, but we shall be using them here in a more limited way. There is further material on enumerated types in the chapter. We'll use the Zool Better project as our starting point for this demonstration, but then switch to the first Zool with Enums project later on. One of the limitations of all the versions of the Zool game we've used until now is that the command words are all tied to particular text strings that are embedded in the source code in various places. If a particular command word occurs in multiple places, then this results in a form of code duplication, for instance. Another potential issue is that the game is closely tied to being used by only English speakers, yet it should have a wider appeal than that. It would be great if players could interact with the game in their own language. Enumerated types in Java give us the opportunity to address both of these issues. In this video, we'll deal primarily with the first, duplication. However, the chapter also provides some further ideas for how to deal with the second. Using the Zool Better project as our starting point, we can see that the text of the different commands is located in several places. Firstly, the valid command strings are stored in the command words class. Secondly, the text of each is stored in command objects. Thirdly, the text in the command objects is queried in the process command method of game. What would help to decouple the code from these explicit strings would be to be able to classify each command string in some way with a unique identity as it is read, and then use that identification in the rest of the program. In other words, there would be only one place in the program where particular words are used, and all the rest of the program then uses the identification values. A first approach to this might be to have some integer class variables that define a unique numerical identification for each command word. Once the classification has been made, a command object would then store the integer value of the command word rather than its string, and the process command method would then test for these integer values. While that approach would work, Java's enumerated type gives us a more flexible solution. We create an enumerated type by selecting the New Class menu. Now we select the Enum button and type the name of our choosing. Notice that we apply the same conventions to enum names as to class names, so we use an initial uppercase letter. In its simplest form, an enumerated type consists of a list of names enclosed within an enum wrapper. In contrast to the previous approach, notice that there does not appear to be any integer value associated with each word. This is because each word is actually a reference to a command word object. Each of the words is actually a public final class variable, so we would refer to them as command word dot quit, command word dot help, etc. In effect, an enum is a special form of class in which all instances of the class are predefined via the enum names. In other words, you cannot create enum objects directly. Now we shall switch to version 1 of the Zool with enums project to see how we can use an enumerated type to improve the project. In the command words class we shall now make use of the enumerated type to map the text of a command to the corresponding command word object. We do this using a map from string to command word. The constructor of command words puts into the map all of the pairings. Now when we want to know what command word a particular string represents, we can look it up, 
as in the get command word method. Notice that we have an unknown value for words that don't match. One immediate effect we can obtain through this approach is to use different words to match to the same command. For instance, we might want to be able to use the strings buy and exit to quit the program. That can be done as easily as adding two further lines to the constructor. Here we add just one. Notice that now the command class stores command word value rather than the text that was typed. Here process command now uses the command word values to work out which action is being invoked. What you see here is called a switch statement. Now that we have this structure in place, adding new command words is very easy. Step 1 is to add a new value to the enumerated type. Step 2 is to add the association between look and the command string. Step 3 is to add an extra case to process command. Finally, we would then define the look method in game, but we won't do that here. In summary, Defining an enumerated type has allowed us to decouple several parts of the game from the literal strings that are used to invoke commands. This removal of a form of code duplication has made it easier to add synonyms for commands, and new commands, and it would also make it easier to translate the user interface to use a different language. Enumerated types in Java are actually class types, and they support many of the features of class types, such as fields, constructors, and methods. The names listed in an enum are actually class constant values that refer to unique instances of the enum type. You can find more on enumerated types in the chapter.